Spoilers ahead. Last chance. You have been warned. Zack Snyder's Justice League is canon to this movie. I didn't expect Michael Keaton to die because he originally was supposed to be in the ending, which led to Aquaman 2 and Batgirl. Good little bow on him though, I think we've seen the last of him sadly. It's also sad his world dies. But he was going to be the Batman going forward for a time. This was scrapped as Batgirl was cancelled. There were three endings to this movie though, as Henry Cavill filmed a cameo that was cut, which infuriates me that they did reuse that footage somehow. But let's go over what the three endings were under three different regimes of management at Warner Brothers. The original ending had Michael Keaton show up at the end with Sasha Kaye as Supergirl, showing that Barry, what Barry did cause them to survive. The one that was done when Cavill was announced to be back was similar, but Cavill and Godot showed up in new cameos alongside them. Affleck was left out, but Michael Keaton was there. However, in the original script leak, which proved accurate, and I don't know whether or not this was filmed, it's very possible it was, in the end credits Aquaman scene, the same scene happens, but Affleck contacts Barry saying he's lost and or trapped in the multiverse and needs help. That would've been cool. The one we got was George Clooney, which was a reshoot done under James Gunn. Basically confirms that Barry is in the Batman and Robin timeline, and he created the diverging timeline between Batman Returns and Batman Forever. Where the key movies still happen, Clooney, but later things are different. While I love that they got Clooney back and we have Batman No Way Home essentially, I have severe problems with this in the end credit scene as it was directly said The Flash would reset the entire DC universe. It doesn't really. It just creates a couple new timelines. James Gunn said this movie leads into Aquaman 2, which leads into Superman Legacy, the first film in the DCEU, not counting Blue Beetle. But he also said that Clooney won't be the Batman in the upcoming Brave and the Bold, so this isn't the new timeline or universe. Clooney will not be the Batman going forward, but the film totally accidentally implies this. General audiences will be very confused and there should have been more to spell out of what was happening and what the plan is going forward because many of these DCU trails just aren't gonna go anywhere, unfortunately. And for the end credit scene, since we mentioned it, it doesn't have the Affleck cameo, so it feels pointless. I think it exists solely to confirm Momoa will be sticking around as Aquaman no matter what, given the dialogue. At first glance, it made it seem like Barry made it back to his timeline, but he didn't, and this is a different Aquaman. So will Aquaman 2 be in the DCEU and end it? Will it be the new DCEU? Will it be the Batman and Robin universe that we see here? Is the first Aquaman still canon? Will it be canon to the first Aquaman? man where Steppenwolf is referenced or some new one? How will the future watch order be determined or are most of the events of the Aquaman films just carrying over? It's a huge mess. There's so many questions and we won't know until the movie comes out. To make matters worse, Keaton originally filmed a cameo in Aquaman 2 but it was cut. Affleck was then revealed to have filmed reshoots for Aquaman 2 that Momoa confirmed and announced but now the rumors he's cut too. Keaton being cut makes sense since Batgirl was canceled. If Affleck is in Aquaman 2, it's definitely in the DCEU. If he isn't, we will see what the film confirms and doesn't, but as of now, nothing lines up. It both feels confusing and frustrating as so many loose ends won't be tied up or followed, and I sincerely doubt we will get the sequel that has been written to The Flash because of the disappointing box office performance. Now, don't get me wrong, I love this movie, but I hope that all the cameos that were filmed in all of these movies make it to the DVD re releases as what if alternate endings so we can at least see them. Somehow I doubt that ever happens. The DCEU is all but dead. Thankfully this does feel like a swan song for it and for that I love it. It survived three leaderships in three WB regimes with different endings for each one. No wonder it's confusing and I can't help but feel the disappointing box office has something to do with all of that. With James Gunn and Cope pumping it up but still making it sound like that it didn't matter since everything we think is getting rebooted. Plus, add on Ezra Miller's personal issues and a smaller PR campaign because of that, here we are. But time will tell. Personally, wish they'd just fully reboot and not carry anything over to save confusion since it's not going to continue the DCU at all. And I hope they eventually release all those unused cameos like I mentioned before. Zack Snyder's Justice League is canon to this movie. Confirmed. How, you might ask? Well, I saw The Flash twice to confirm. Here's why it is. Bruce and Barry mention Barry's time traveling at Pazarnov, which is in Russia. This is the city in Russia in Zack Snyder's Justice League, and Barry only time travels in the Snyder Cut. Iris is there, played by Kiersey Clemens, but also says she remembers seeing Barry a few years ago, which he awkwardly denies. It's when he saved her from the car accident in Zack Snyder's Justice League. And in the Chronosphere, they show footage of Jason Momoa as Aquaman specific to the Snyder Cut. Pretty cool. Made me happy. 
When I saw the dark flash rumor and image, I immediately assumed it would be an alternate berry and thought to, to the back of my head that it could be one of the berries that we see. I sort of forgot about the latter part of that, but I was right yet still surprised it turned out to be a be the younger berry as the older berry in the future. Time travel is extremely complex here. I like it though, so I'm not going to reckon with it too much. But like with many plot points, I also guess it was berry based on the fact that there's a ton of similarities to, spoiler for the Flash season 3 CW TV show, Savitar who is a future Barry. They pull a lot from that show, including Flash saying goodbye to his mother, but I do appreciate that they did the whole how of it different. They also completely avoid who kills his mom, which is a smart setup for a potential sequel to introduce Reverse Flash. However, I'm not sure why they didn't just address why he couldn't use time travel to peek through time and actually figure out who actually was the murderer. It was a glaring oversight to me, and I doubt we'll get the sequel now. It's not insane to think that Zod killed Superman in the alternate timeline and Kara took his place with the Codex. She was in the movie for a reason and Zod needed a reason to come to Earth. Boy, she had no qualms about killing, which isn't really addressed here as any kind of rule for Barry either. Before we get to Michael Keaton, let's dig into the other cameos. We get to see Gal Gadot again as Wonder Woman is probably her final time and it was nice. We have George Reeves, the original Superman. We have a version of Jay Garrick, Flash, which is cool, but it looked a lot like Teddy Sears, who was fake Jay and actually Zoom in the Flash TV show, yet the actor confirmed it was never him. A deep fake CGI version of Christopher Reeve, Helen Slater, and Nicolas Cage show up. And I read somewhere that Slater and Cage actually did have to film some, probably for the deep fake tech. Not really sure if that's been confirmed, but unfortunately the director of the film spoiled Nicolas Cage's cameo weeks before the premiere, which sucked. It was everywhere online, unavoidable and thus lucky. I was not. If you don't know, Nicolas Cage was almost Superman in a film called Superman Lives that Kevin Smith wrote and Tim Burton was supposed to direct. The film was canceled just a couple weeks before production was to begin. The spider that appears was supposed to be in the movie. It's pretty awesome they got it that here. I hope they make an animated version of that one day. We also get a brief Adam West Batman appearance. Lastly, I can now use the Flash's time traveling to headcanon that the Joss Whedon Justice League cut is an alternate timeline or that Barry's meddling avoids the nightmare timeline and in turn creates the Justice League version timeline, giving a happy ending there as the cut does provide for the DCEU. Long live the DC Extended Universe. I will miss you. But fix this continuity mess, please, James Gunn.